What happens inside a black hole? Well, apart from the end of the universe, the answer may surprise you. Some of them may even have a second event horizon. Let's find out more. I make a new video each week exploring this strange and wonderful universe that we live in. If you enjoy these videos, then please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Well, firstly and very briefly, let's look at how black holes form. Stars are a huge balancing act between the outward pressure of nuclear fusion, producing the star's energy, and the force of gravity pushing inwards. When very massive stars become supernovae and explode, even though they still have a huge mass and therefore huge gravity pushing inwards, the outward force produced by the nuclear fusion no longer exists. The matter in the star then crushes inwards more and more. As the gravity of the collapsing star increases further and further, so does the escape velocity. This means that in order to escape the gravitational pull of the star, you'd need to travel faster and faster. Once the escape velocity reaches a speed of light, then nothing can escape the gravitational pull of the star, not even light, and a black hole is born. At the centre of a black hole is the matter of the star crushed down to an infinitely dense point called a singularity. However, around the singularity, defining the point of no return, is the event horizon, otherwise known as the Schwarzschild radius. So what's the significance of the Schwarzschild radius and the event horizon? The event horizon marks the point of no return. Black holes are weird. Nothing can escape them. Not light, not information, nothing. And once past that point, you would never be able to get out. Even if you did survive going past that point, you'd never be able to tell anyone what it's like. Because even if you had a working radio, the radio waves would never be able to leave the black hole since they're bound by the laws of physics and travel at the speed of light. This shouldn't worry us because we'd never survive falling into a black hole anyway. Or would we? For stellar black holes, and these are black holes that are formed from the collapse of a massive star, as we approach the event horizon, the force of gravity would increase massively. So much so that if we were going into the black hole feet first, then the gravitational force on our feet would be much higher than the force of gravity on our heads. This would have the result of stretching us out in a process known as spaghettification. Yes, physicists are weird. To an observer outside the gravitational pull of the black hole, it would appear that I was falling more and more slowly as I approached it. The light would be taking longer and longer to reach them, until eventually I reached the event horizon when the light would take an infinite amount of time to reach them. However, don't worry, I wouldn't appear smeared out on the event horizon forever. As I got closer to it, the light would get more and more redshifted. I'd get dimmer and dimmer until I faded from view altogether. If they could see my watch, it would appear to tick more and more slowly. Due to the immense gravity, space-time is more extremely curved near to a black hole. And due to something called time dilation, Near a black hole, time ticks more slowly. As far as I was concerned, my watch would be keeping time just fine. However, if I turned round and looked back out away from the black hole, everything would appear to me to be in fast forward. I needn't worry, I'd be dead long before I even reached the event horizon. However, if the black hole was of the type that exists at the centre of our galaxy, in other words a supermassive black hole, it might be a little different. These black holes are truly immense and have event horizons measured not in kilometres but in millions of kilometres. This means that the gravity by the event horizon is much lower and crossing it may be almost unnoticeable. And if you thought it was strange so far, hold on, it's about to get very strange. In one very specific type of black hole called a Reissner Nordstrom de Sitter black hole, they actually have two horizons. These black holes are highly charged, non-rotating and unfortunately theoretical. However, it is thought that maybe rotating non-charged black holes, which definitely do exist, could have similar properties. The outer horizon is the event horizon and acts as that point of no return. However, if you survive the event horizon, there's an inner horizon called the Cauchy horizon. It is at the Cauchy horizon that time stops. People have conjectured that the Cauchy horizon would in all likelihood kill you. 
if the event horizon doesn't. This is because with time stopping at the Cauchy horizon, all the matter and energy that ever fell into the black hole throughout the whole of its history would hit the Cauchy horizon exactly at the same time. This wouldn't be very good for you and would more than likely kill you. Further research has suggested that because we live in a universe that's expanding in an inflationary way, in other words, faster than the speed of light, yes, you heard, maybe that's for another video, that only a small fraction of the total energy would reach the Cauchy horizon at any point, meaning that, theoretically, you may even survive the Cauchy horizon. If, however, you manage to survive even this horizon and manage to go beyond it, then you might find yourself in a strange world where cause doesn't necessarily lead to effect. Beyond the Cauchy horizon, there will be no time, there will be no space, just an infinite instant, forever. Here, your past wouldn't determine your future. In fact, your past would be obliterated, but instead, you'd have infinite futures. Okay, so I guess it's time to come back to the relative safety of, well, not being in a black hole. Infinite futures, though. Well, anyway, until next time, thank you for watching.